Um, this is Lisa Hughes again from Reading Muhlenberg Career and Technology Center. And this is the welding, the very short 10-minute um, activity with a webinar to finish your math series for the PLC. Um, I'm, I'm going to start off. We, we Again, we didn't get a whole ton of people re responding to this. What I would encourage you to do is if you can, if, if all you can do is send the five questions, the math, just the, the short math questions, that would be great. Uh, we would love to put a packet together for everybody to use. And you know, if, if everybody would just do the five questions, it would certainly make a very nice packet. So that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for attending. And hopefully, you're learning something in these uh, PLC webinars. I think you are. I think it's nice that they're recording them, because you can see them whenever you have the chance instead of having to get out of class, which I know is tough for a lot of teachers. Um, so without further ado, we'll start. Um, again, uh, my name is Lisa Hughes. I'm from Reading Muhlenberg. And um, I'm going to show you a couple activities that are specific for the welding um, category. Um, one thing I noticed, uh, and, and some of these, I, I will admit, I haven't done a lot uh, with Mr. Milan, I, I have done quite a few. We we what we did do this year together is we have uh, instrumented the clickers to review for the welding Nocti, um, and and we've done some of the math at this point, and we're going to be working through next year doing some math as well. So, um, what I did was I I looked online, I I did some digging with some of the things we've done in in our school here, and came up with some ideas for you. This, this, I thought, was very interesting. Um, this is called Mathematics at the Welding Shop. And this was done um, by a ninth grader. And he took a trip out to a welding shop, a, a hopper shop, where they make grain bins. And what it did was it, it walked through what welders pretty much need to see when they're doing this process. So I love this. And, and there's a whole, like I said, there's a whole series of this, a whole Word document showing how they needed to calculate step by step to do the, the math involved. And in fact, um, I had just found this. And I'm actually going to do an actual worksheet based on this instead of just using what um, Andrew had come up with. So there's a calculation one, which is the surface area. And then, you know, when raised into the cone shape, the volume of the cone, and the spacing in the legs on the hopper. And, and like I said, it was very interesting. It, it went through the actual calculation. Uh, I do want to get some pictures involved in this. So once I get this done, uh, I will uh, post this as well for, for all of you to use on this. But I think it's a great example, and it has some great value and it's a real easy project. And actually, I think it would be a great um, pair project that you could give your students to work on some math in your area. Um, the other thing that I think is very important is this is a PDF. It's a great resource for you to use. You can create problems with it. Um, it's 19 pages. It talks, again, about dimensional analysis, um, which are different math terms that need to be brought into play as far as introducing them to students. Because students talk about these in different math classes, and they don't know what they mean. Um, and these are all, you know, uh, topic one is why do we need math to weld? Um, and, and if you notice, there's lots of different calculate weld volume, which is, which is great in gas volume. How to read a ruler, which is critical in your area, and I know Mr. Milan at our school, one of the things he struggles with is the ruler reading and also the ordering things from greatest to least and converting between decimals and, and fraction values, which is very critical in your, in your program. So this has got some great um, looks as far as what you would calculate as, as welding and also what students see on these tests, if even just looking at the bottom of this page where you have the, uh, the volume of that rectangular block and how visually you can see that in your program. You can actually show 
students, you know, these three-dimensional objects and show them what volume, what is the volume of that. Um, here again, some great online resources. I, I thought on this black screen, there's some great um, videos about math, and it, it goes through the math and the physics, which you do use physics and you do use some chemistry. Um, I learned a lot when I was doing the clickers on, on chemical, different chemical situations, which are also very mathematical. So um, the, if you want to buy the whole series, which I did buy, it was $16 and it actually has all the PowerPoint slides uh, basically in a, in a PDF form, which might be a better way to look at this as far as getting your kids to look at it as well as the videos. Um, here are all the modules, and again, there's some great, they're, they're reading the ruler. I, I have actually some great uh, ruler reading programs which are actually posted for some of the other PLCs that there's no reason these PLCs can't uh, mix and match with what they have. Um, there's also one that I just covered and the other one on uh, scale drawings, which you also use because you're going to have to be able to read the scale drawings as well. So. There's a lot of uh, overlap in the different PLCs that you can um, use some of those programs to, and all of those will be posted online. One of the things we um, are beginning to do here as well um, is we are required at our school to do math and literacy every day. So we've created this journal entry sheet. If you notice, it's, it is specific to welding. Um, I can't spell. I just noticed that welding is spelled wrong. I will have to change that. Um, uh, Mr. Milan probably already did. Uh, I just didn't in mind, so I will change that when I actually post the original of this out online. But we have a welding word of the day, so you get your word in. We have an SAT word of the day that gets posted on our TV every day. And there's also a math problem um, of the day. And if you notice on the small sheet next to it, we have a variety of different kinds of math problems that are specific to welding math. Um, and there's, there's a, a lot of things that you can use for this as well as, as anything else. Um, and one of the things I want to make note is it's very important with math problems and with that you give students enough space to write. Um, we as math educators sometimes don't do that. We try to fit 50 problems on a page. Um, and that creates, that it's very difficult for students to see that. Um, and that's why this journal entry sheet, if you notice, there's plenty of space to do some writing and do some calculations. Um, another thing, like I said, um, that we do, and I have this um, in PowerPoint, and it also, I think, is in SmartBoard, is um, Mr. Milan gives a, a pretest just to see where everybody stands. And this I created because a lot of, um, a lot of your math is down to 30 seconds of an inch. So, and students have trouble seeing that. So this is a big on-screen zero to one inch ruler. And what we do is, if you notice there's numbers, and um, what you can do is once a day or every day, you can tell them to choose a different number. You can move the numbers around to choose a different line. But um, they can identify where the arrow is pointing to. It's a great way to practice fractions. You could even, to a point, do decimals based on that. You can say this is the fraction, but what's the decimal equivalent to that? Um, the other thing that's interesting with this is um, here's another problem. And the challenge to this problem isn't just the fractions. It's the way the problem's worded. Um, your supervisor asks you to cut four pieces of two-inch square tubing. Realizing first of all that I don't put the I don't make the four as a number four, you write it as a word. Students tend to miss those things. He needs pieces cut that are the following sizes. But now, so we're not just going to look at the sizes and cut them. We're going to say he tells you to add the first two together to get a total length. Then he asks you to add number three and number four to get a total length, and he's looking for a combined piece that is under nine and twelve sixteenths. Which one will you choose? How much over the 9 and 12 sixteenths is the other one? Now, this opens up a wealth of possibilities mathematically. It also is the way real world is. 
you got to you may have to go out and pull pieces that you need to weld together or bring together or cut apart that you need to use and you want to do it very economically because you don't want to waste materials. Um, I know students that have lost positions here co-op wise because they just went and pulled things and did what they wanted and then they were wasting a lot of product and that doesn't work well anymore in, in the, econ the economic situation we have. So what this does is it, it does a couple things. It, it forces you to read and make decisions based on your reading. It also allows you to talk about this piece is under 9 and 12 sixteenths. Well, under 9 and 12 sixteenths math mathematically means less than. So you can open up the showing what the less than symbol was, showing you know how to organize things to show less than. So it allows you more than just adding and subtracting fractions. It, it allows you to do a whole lot with that. And I have a couple of them. Um, another thing that's out there for you is the T-charts. And um, this is one that we completed here um, that we needed to uh, submit to the state. And, and it does have Common Core. Some of them at this point do not have Common Core on. But like I said in other webinars, you still can use them. The still basic facts whether they're, they were PSSA related or Common Core, you still need the basic facts. And you know, pull them from the, um, the internet if you can get them or use them. But they have great problems. They have great um, step-by-steps. And they have problems that are within your program area. You know, the, the ideal thing would be to use all the problems on that page four. But to be honest, if all you want to do is pull them and use the original example, um, the weld capacity for a tank. Um, that's, that's what you use it for. It's still showing the math involved in that. Um, again, the other thing that um, Mr. Milan has been concerned with, and a lot of us are, are definitions, things that you need to know, things that they don't know. And it, you know, it's amazing, um, the numerator and denominator, they tend to lose that. Some of them haven't heard some of the references to that since fifth and sixth grade. So to talk about some of these, even least to greatest, least and greatest, sometimes students get confused as far as that terminology, equivalent fractions, things like that. Um, very important that you know you just go over it. Um, again, um, the math and CTC online has some great worksheets. This is um, percent um, gas uh, cylinder worksheet and I, it has some great things on it and again I, I will have all these even these things that are online I have downloaded a lot of these and um, have them readily accessed if you don't see them please don't hesitate to ask um, the other thing that and this was created by Tom Dietrich he's our plumbing instructor he created a series of about I think my thoughts are he has about 35 or 40 of these at this point uh, created here. I, I will tell you this isn't any of my creation. He's very mathematical. He was um, um, he's an associate engineering degree and still teaches. He now teaches also at Temple, but um, he has some great. These are in SmartBoard, but they can can be converted into PowerPoint if needed. And this is just one. So. 35 are all, the, all these different ones. And here's one, propane, propane tank capacity. And what he does is he puts them up. And if you notice on, on the one, there are blank spaces. The other has the answer key. He does one of these per day. And he repeats them throughout the day. So even if this one, if you count how many blanks, or how many lines or rows there are, he is enough for seven different days of activities. And the one thing that's great about math is that you get better with repetition. And he will tell you that his students in his class, by going through all these, have become, have started with very poor math skills and have gotten much better at it. And, and they, they actually work very well. So, um, so next steps and some thank yous. Um, this, this is probably, I think, your last webinar, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is the last math one. What you need to do at this point is view both of the math ones, complete the webinar response form, and if you note the date has changed for you to submit that by. It was a little, um, 
sooner than this, but um, due to some constraints that we all know you're having with NOCTI, with um, a new student, maybe orientations coming in for next year, graduation ceremonies coming up, um, the date has been extended to May 9th, 2014. So if you want to fill that out, I know I've seen the form. It's really not a difficult form. Please send it out. If you have any questions or need the form, um, just email Jennifer Grams at Meter. And I want to thank you to Mark uh, Seifert and Daniel Milan for the two people who have submitted things to us. I really appreciate your response to that. And again, if you can still send in a couple, uh, your five math terms, or, and I didn't say this in the other ones, or if you did, and for some reason or another I didn't get it, please resubmit it or send me an email and say look for it, and I will gladly look for it. So thank you very much, and have a good rest of your year.